You notice that this brings the entire piece of material three-eighths of an inch farther forward, bringing this edge on your original cutting line. Lock this in position. When you cut your dovetails now, you'll cut the proper depth dovetail for your rabbit a drawer front. Again, we are only cutting the drawer front by itself. Move your spacer block and your drawer front to the opposite side of the Omni jig. Again, be sure to place the bottom edge of your drawer front against your stop block. There you have your completed rabbited drawer front. If all the Omni jig did was cut half inch, half blind dovetails better than any other jig on the market, I'd buy it. But the Omni jig does far more than that. With the addition of a few accessory templates, guide bushings, and router bits, you can really add a professional touch to your projects that you'll be proud of. For example, I just demonstrated the half inch, half blind dovetail joint. A quarter inch half blind dovetail joint can be cut using the quarter inch accessory template, a quarter inch dovetail bit, and a 5 16 inch guide bushing. Setup procedure for the quarter inch dovetail is the same as for the half inch dovetail. Positioning of the template and the stops will differ. The dimensions are listed in your instruction manual. As I mentioned earlier, machine cut dovetails were often distinguished by their set size and spacing, whereas hand cut dovetails often varied in size and spacing. The Omni Jig now gives the craftsman the ability to cut dovetails that have the appearance of being hand cut. The first additional dovetail I would like to demonstrate is the half inch, half blind dovetail with two inch spacing. This is a beautiful joint for exposed joinery and was used in early contemporary furniture. The equipment needed to cut the half inch hand dovetails with two inch spacing includes a router, two dovetail templates, the pin template and the tail template, the half inch router bit, and the 5 8 inch guide bushing. These two items come with the basic Omni jig. While the half inch dovetails with two inch spacing may be cut on any width of board from two and a quarter inches to 16 inches, there are certain widths that are more ideal than others. These widths are determined by the formula two times the number of pins plus one eighth of an inch. For my demonstration today, I'll be cutting dovetails with two pins. Therefore, the width of my board will be two times two plus one eighth of an inch, or four and one eighth inches. Remember I mentioned earlier that the half inch hand dovetails are cut with two templates, a tail template, which I marked on the template, and a pin template. I will begin our demonstration with the tail template. Here you see the Omni jig and the tailboard properly positioned for cutting our tails. The way this was achieved was by first placing the pinboard under the front clamp, raising it approximately a quarter of an inch above the surface of the Omni jig. Next, slide your tailboard under the top clamp, butt it firmly against the pinboard, and lock it into position. Next, I placed the finger template on top of the top board and locked it down into place, making sure that it was level all the way across the Omni jig. The next thing to do is to properly position the tailboard in respect to the fingers on the template. To do this, the distance from the front edge of the tailboard to the back of the finger template must be equal to the thickness of your pin board plus one eighth of an inch. The tailboard is then repositioned so that the distance from the outside edge of the board to the inside of this finger is equal to the outside edge of the board to the inside of this finger. Once the tailboard is properly positioned, slide the stop block over and lock it in position. Next, 
Remove the pin board. Remember that the tails and pins are routed separately. For this cut, there's no change in the setup of the router that we had for the half inch, half blind dovetail. Here you see the Omni jig set up for proper cutting of the pin board. First, a piece of scrap material at least one inch wider than the pin board and the same thickness as the tailboard is placed under the top clamp. Then the pin template is placed on top of this piece of scrap material in the same position as your previous tail template. Next, your pin board is positioned under the front clamp with the inside of the drawer out and butted up against the underside of the template. The pin template is positioned so that the front edge evenly overlaps the pin board so that we can cut all the way through the pin board. Additionally, this dimension from here to here is equal to the dimension from here to here. With your pin board properly positioned, slide your stop over and lock it down. Remember that all cuts will be made on this side of the fixture. To ensure a tight fit of this joint, you must make a slight cut on the inside corners of your pins. Trim these corners off just slightly. This is done because your tails have a radius in the corners where your pins have squared edges. By trimming the inside corners of your pins, you've now created a radius and this will ensure a perfect fit. So far, I have demonstrated half-blind dovetails where the joinery can be seen from only one side of the drawer. The Omni jig can also cut through dovetails with variable spacing where the joinery can be seen from both sides of the drawer. This type of joinery is very beautiful and is usually only seen in fine quality handcrafted furniture. The Omni jig can cut three-quarter inch dovetails in stock up to 13 16 inch thick or half inch dovetails in stock up to one half inch thick. I will demonstrate cutting the three quarter inch dovetails. The equipment needed to cut the adjustable through dovetails includes your router, the adjustable through dovetail template, the long and the thin spacers which come as a unit with the template, the three quarter inch dovetail cutter, a 5 16 inch straight cutter, and a 5 8 inch guide bushing. The 5 8 inch guide bushing comes with your basic Omni jig. Points to remember when cutting the through dovetails include all pieces to be cut, both pins and tails, will be held under the front bar clamp. All cuts will be made on one side of the Omni jig. The top clamp will always hold scrap backup material that is at least one quarter inch thicker than the material to be dovetailed. Here you see I have a quarter inch spacer underneath my three quarter inch material. This is required so that the cutter will not cut into the base of the Omni jig. The tail board is cut with a dovetail bit and the pin board is cut with a straight bit. To set up the Omni jig to cut through dovetails, place the washers on the bracket rod in this order. The large spacer, three black washers and a thin spacer. Additionally, adjust the rod nut so that it is within 1 16th of an inch of the base of the Omni jig. Do this on both sides. Next, to cut the tails, reposition the washers and place the Omni jig template in this position. Tighten it down. 
Position the bracket in the same position on the other side and tighten it down. The tailboard is positioned under the front clamp. I have removed the left stop block and butted the tailboard against the left stop and flush against the underside of the template. The OmniJig through dovetail template differs from all the others in that the pins and tails can now be variably spaced. This gives you the ability to begin and end each dovetail cut with a half pin. Additionally, you can create your own pattern of pins and tails. For this demonstration, I'm going to use four of the template forks to cut my tails in this board. You'll notice that I have pre-marked my board 7 sixteenths of an inch from the edge on both ends. This will guarantee a half pin beginning and ending in my dovetail cut. I reposition the outside forks so that this inside edge lines up with that 7 16 inch mark and tighten my set screw. I do the same thing on the opposite side of the board. Next, I can position the inner forks anywhere I want to create the pattern of pins and tails that I desire. Next, I reposition my backup board with the quarter inch spacer behind my tailboard. Butt it firmly against the tailboard and lock it in place. The router is prepared to cut our tailboard with a 5 8 inch guide bushing and a 3 quarter inch dovetail bit. The depth of cut is adjusted for the thickness of the pin board plus one half of an inch. Set the router on the OmniJig template and check to make sure that there is clearance between the cutter and the base of the OmniJig. Next, you will carefully guide the router in the template fork slots to cut the tails on the tail board. Be careful not to cut in other areas. The OmniJig is now set up for cutting the pins. The template has been positioned so that only the thin washer is behind the bracket and all other spacers are in front of the bracket. The forks have not been repositioned. Additionally, we have positioned the pin board so that this distance from here to here is equal to this distance from here to here. The stop block has been replaced and slid over to butt against the pin board and locked in position. To cut the pin board, the router is set up with the same 5 8 inch bushing and a 5 16 inch straight cutter. Adjust the depth of cut to cut the pin boards to be equal to the thickness of the tail board plus one half inch. To cut the pins, this time we will guide the router on only the forward portion of the forks. All the waste material in between will be removed. Once again, set the router on the OmniJig to make sure that there is clearance between the cutter and the base of the OmniJig. After both the pins and tails are cut, check for fit. Perfect. If the joint is too loose, make your adjustments to cutting the pins by moving the template back using the rod nuts. If it's too tight, move the template forward, again using the rod nuts. As you notice, my pins project slightly above my tail piece. 
I like to cut my dovetails in this manner so that I can sand these flush and have a perfectly flush joint. The box joint, sometimes referred to as a finger joint, can also be cut on the Omni jig. This joint is generally used in box construction to provide plenty of glue surface on the interlocking fingers and give added strength to your boxes. It's also a very decorative joint and can be used in fine furniture construction. I use it regularly in my shop for small boxes and bins to hold materials in. The equipment needed to cut the half inch box joints includes a router, the box joint template, a one half inch straight cutter, and your 5 8 inch guide bushing. The guide bushing comes with your basic Omni jig. Here you see the Omni jig set up to cut the half inch box joints. To cut the box joint, we use a technique similar to cutting the through dovetail. First, all cuts will be made on the front left hand side of the fixture. And backup material, at least a quarter inch thicker than the material being routed, is placed under the top clamp and butted against our workpiece to help prevent tear out. And then position your box joint template on top of the scrap material, making sure that the front edge of the board to the back of the finger slot is approximately 3 8 of an inch. I've marked the workpiece at the center and positioned it under the template so that the center is 1 16th of an inch to the right of one of the fingers. Once the workpiece is properly positioned under the template, slide the left front stop bar over and lock it down. We are now ready to make our cuts. The router is set up to cut the box joint using the standard 5 8 inch guide bushing and a 1 half inch straight cutter. Depth of cut is adjusted to be equal to the thickness of the material being cut plus 1 quarter of an inch. Place your router on the template and check to make sure that there is clearance between the router bit and the base of the Omni jig. Both ends of all four pieces of the box are cut in exactly the same manner. There we have the finished joint. 